Praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Hope everybody's had a blessed service so far. I meant to give a testimony, but I'll just go ahead and do it on recording. Uh, yesterday, uh, in the morning, I usually, Saturdays, the Sabbath is when I spend time putting together the message that I'm going to share in the service on Sunday. And I, I uh, confess to the leadership that I was felt blocked. I felt like I wasn't. I mean, I already had throughout the week a concept of what the word would be, but I felt like I couldn't move forward, like something was missing. And and uh, many prayed for me, and I thank you for your prayers, and your prayers were answered uh, because what I didn't know is that God was waiting for me to listen to the Sabbath message yesterday to put the whole thing together. And that's the reason why I didn't have the message yet, is because the Sabbath message that Pastor Rufus gave uh, brought the brought forth the scripture that I was missing and now has completed this message today. So I want to praise God for how intimately and perfect, perfectly he's involved with this church and every message that we hear. Everything is precept upon precept. It's a beautiful thing, and I'm just very grateful and humbled about how God works. Praise the Lord. Amen. So speaking of that, um, uh, it's time to give this word that I believe is clearly what God has for us today. So let me go ahead and ask him to, to be in control. Heavenly Father, in the name of your glorious Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for being yours, that you've got this flock, you're the head of this church, and that you are the one leading us and guiding us all. And so today, I thank you for the privilege of delivering this word. It is an honor, Lord, but I know unless you do it through your Holy Spirit, it'll just be my flesh and my own understanding. So I surrender myself to you. I pray that you prepare every heart and every, uh, any, every mind to receive your truth today, both those of us who are here now and those who will listen in the future. And bring glory to your name through it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Here we go. Our opening verse is from the book of James, chapter 1, verse 12. And it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. What a powerful statement this is. And I pray that God opens our eyes to what exactly this looks like as we move forward. And so the title of this sermon is called The Graduating Class. And we, uh, we, it's a, the timing is amazing because it's, it is time for graduations throughout colleges that some of us work at. And it's the season of graduation. And he's giving us a story about our own graduation that he has planned for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. The graduating class prepared for every good work. And I pray that we'll see it by the end of this. What, Just like in the world, we go to school and some of us stop at high school. Some of us go to college, whatever. But the idea of graduation is you've been given everything you need. Then you are now prepared to go and have an impact on the world. To have to play your part in it. Now the world is lacking, and it has its 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 things. But with God and the kingdom of God, there's nothing lacking. When God is finished with us, and He has brought us to graduation, it's perfect. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can't believe I actually found a diploma with a crown in a picture. Praise God for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. So thank you, Lord, for guiding me to that and whoever put that picture together because we did. it did say we're receiving a crown at our graduation. Praise the Lord. Let's look at that verse again, that opening verse. Blessed is the man or woman who endures temptation. So we must endure temptation or testing, right? For when he or she has been approved, he or she will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised. To those who love him. Do we love the Lord? Amen. Amen. Then that's what his promise is for us. Praise the Lord. All right. So 
just like in the world, in order to graduate, you got to go and take tests. And you got to pass those tests. Without passing those tests, you don't get no diploma, and we don't get no crown. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, before we start thinking that we got to be really good and work really hard, God's going to show us something different. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Exodus chapter 20, 20, verse, <laughs> chapter 20, verse 20. Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. Amen? Amen. You see that even in the uh, Old Testament, God is already showing his way. And so that's why we can rest assured, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Those were God's children then. And he's uh, saying, don't fear. I'm not coming here to destroy you. I'm here to test you because you, I have to prepare you to be fruitful for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. And then we would fear him because when, in, our, in our lessons that we go through in this school of the wilderness, we, we learn lessons, things we can't just learn from reading a book. And so we, we, we do things, we fall, and then our fear is now for the Lord is, hey, you know what, I should probably listen to him because he knows better. I tried it my way and it didn't get me anywhere. Amen? And if we have the fear of the Lord, he's ultimately going to bring us to this place that we may not sin. Really? Are you telling me that's possible? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, now, before we get into that, we want to know what does that look like in our graduation because we know in the world, okay, if you get a high school diploma, you can get a basic job or a trade or something like that. If you get a college degree, you can get a, a much more, usually, uh, more official, higher paying job. If you get a doctorate, you're, you're in the driver's seat and so forth. But what does our graduation make us? It makes us spiritual fathers and mothers. Amen? Amen. You all know I love these verses. First John chapter 2, verses 12 through 14, first half. Again, think of this not in the physical, but in the spiritual. I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. In other words, that is all it takes. The guy at the cross never became mature in Christ. He, he believed and that day he was with him in paradise. He was still just a baby but his sins were forgiven for his sake. Amen? Amen. I write to you, fathers and mothers, because you have known him from who is from the beginning. This is the important part. What I, To be a spiritual father and mother is, a, as we're going to see, is, is also knowing him. Deep knowing him. I write to you, young men. Somewhere along the spiritual journey, we become a young man or a young woman because we have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, you see, we see it twice, because you have known the Father. God drew us. No one came to Christ unless the Father draw him. And we've experienced the, the, the forgiveness of sins from the Father by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Amen? I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. We see it twice. We should pay attention. Graduating means that we've known him. Praise the Lord. And now, 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. Now, by this, we know that we know him. How do we know that we know him? If we keep his commandments. Now, if we keep his commandments, well, let me read the rest of this verse here. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments. What are the commandments, right? To love God, the Lord, with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And it highlights what that looks like, right? Amen. Do not have any other gods. Do not have an idols. So honor the Sabbath. Honor, honor your parents. Do not swear. Do not commit adultery. Do not lie. Do not steal. Do not covet. These are the things that we generally do. But God is saying, if we know him, we will keep his commandments. And if we, and, and, and he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Amen? But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He said, that day you will know that I am in the Father, the Father in me, and me in you. Amen? Amen. And that day, what's he talking about? It's not talking about we get buried and we go somewhere else. He's talking about a day he promises for those who love him. Amen? Amen. Amen. He who says he abides in him, as Jesus said, abide in me, for without me you can do nothing. 
ought to himself to walk just as he walked. We cannot gloss over this. He is talking about us walking on this planet as he walked. Amen? Amen. He even said to the disciples, I tell you the truth because I go to the Father, greater things you will do than what I do. Is that what we're experiencing today? I don't think so, right? But that's a promise he has for those who love him and walk with him. Amen? Amen. He will cause us to walk as he walked on this planet. That's a huge deal. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly await for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Amen? Amen. I hope we, we're, I, I know we've even heard some of these things before, but I believe God wants us to understand this is his promise to those who love him. Amen? Amen. Wouldn't you love to have that second encounter, that personal encounter with Jesus Christ? Amen? Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. And this is one of the things I got out of yesterday's Sabbath message. And that is so amazing because God was already talking about this in the Old Testament with Joseph. Amen? Yeah. And it was Stephen who was giving this word to this, the Pharisees in the book of Acts, chapter 7, verses 9 through 13. And the patriarchs, this is the, the, the sons of, uh, of Israel, right? And they're the 12 sons. The patriarchs becoming envious sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. Joseph is a type of Christ and delivered him out of all his troubles and gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now a famine and great trouble came over the land of Egypt and Canaan, which is the promised land where the fathers were. And our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our fathers first. They had their first encounter, but they didn't know who he was. Amen? Amen. They didn't know. All they knew is that when they went to Egypt, where Joseph was, they were blessed and they were given provision. Amen? Amen. When we first encounter God, we know, oh, wow, we're being blessed spiritually. And we're beginning, being given our food to eat, our spiritual food. But then, a second time, Joseph was made and the second time Joseph was made known to his brothers, and he comes a second time apart from sin, then we know him, and we are spiritual fathers and mothers. Amen? Amen. And Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. When that happens, we become known to the Father. Right now, we come to the, the Father in the name of Jesus, and that's why we have access. But look at what's happening here. All of a sudden, this second encounter where he reveals himself, that's the blessing that God has promised for us. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Now let's look at Moses and see his journey and find out the fact is during his journey when he led the Israelites out of Egypt, he was the only one who could come before God. Watch this. Exodus chapter 24 verses 1 and 2. Now he said to Moses, God said to him, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. Worship from afar. They're already leaders. They're children of God. We already have leaders, and we are children of God. But what is different? And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come, up, come near, nor shall the people go up with him. So they couldn't do it yet. Moses was the only one who could come before God. Amen? Amen? What was different about Moses? That he could do it, but they could not. Acts chapter 7, we go back to Stephen's his sermon before the Pharisees. In John, verse 22, it says, And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and deeds. In other words, he spent the first 40 years of his life in the world learning the ways of the world and how all that worked. We also spent a certain amount of time in the world before God chose us and delivered us so we can learn about the ways of the world. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now, when he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. God is now moving him. God is revealing that he is a child of God, and he, he's, got, he's full of his own ideas of how he can help them. 
And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him and was who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand, but they did not understand. Well, the truth is, he didn't understand as well. He thought it was his wisdom and his knowledge and his strength, just like us. When we get called, the first thing we do is we think we have to make something happen and that we got the skills to convert people and, and lead them to the truth and everything else. But that's just not the case. Amen. That's why we, as well as Moses, had to go into the wilderness. And the next day he appeared to two of them as they were fighting and tried to reconcile them, saying, Man, you are brethren. Why do you wrong one another? But he who did his neighbor wrong pushed him away, saying, Who made you and a, a ruler and a judge over us? And that's what also can happen in our flesh, is that we can start seeing ourselves as better than other people and we start judging them. Amen? Amen. Do you want to kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? And so when God's drawing us, he also convicts us of sin and we start getting worried about our salvation. And that's all part of the journey. Amen? Amen. Then at this saying, Moses fled and became a dweller in the land of Midian where he had two sons. He went into the wilderness. Amen? Amen. He started going to the school of God. Amen? Amen. That's what happened when he, he left Egypt. Praise the Lord. Amen. And look at this. And when 40 years had passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flame of fire and a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight, and as he drew near to observe, the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not look. He's having a second encounter with God. Amen? Amen. Then the Lord said to him, Take your sandals off your feet. The first one, he didn't know who it was that was already moving him. But now he's face to face. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have seen the oppression of the people in this world. My people who are in this world who are under the oppression of Satan himself. I have heard their groaning, and I have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. Amen? Amen. Forty years in the wilderness, and now he's ready God is going to use him to get, set the rest of the people free. Amen? Amen? Amen. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge, is the one God sent to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and the wilderness for 40 years. Amen? Amen. I know we got distractions going on here. But I hope we see Moses lived 40 years in the world. Moses lived 40 years in the wilderness. Now he leads people into a 40-year journey into the wilderness for themselves. But he went through it first. Amen? Amen. Amen. He was now prepared to lead them. And what happened is, once he finished that journey, he was able to come face to face with God. And they were not. Amen? Amen? Because they were still in their wilderness journey. Their 40 years. Amen? Amen? So we see this pattern of 40. It's very significant. And I know most of us understand this. But many will listen to this for the first time. 40 is a time of trial and testing. For the, They were in the wilderness for 40 years to be tested and tried. And, all their, uh, and Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years. And he was tested and tried. We see it in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Amen? Amen. And of course, in that journey, we learn that we cannot keep them. So we begin to surrender and we start entering his rest and we start trusting him to cause us to have the victory and not ourselves amen? amen and if we don't we we stubbornly try to do it on our own and we go around that mountain again until we finish all those 42 stations in the wilderness mm -hmm. and we come to the rest in him amen? amen 40 years a time of testing and trial amen, amen. where else do we see a 40 luke chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, 
return from the Jordan. He just got baptized. We get baptized. We enter in this wilderness journey. Amen? Amen. It was led by the Spirit as the Spirit leads us into the wilderness. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when it, when it ended, he was hungry. It is a time of testing and trial, just like it was for Moses, just like, like it was for the Israelites, just like it was for Jesus. It wasn't 40 years, it was 40 days, because he passed every test. We do not. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. He passed every temptation. Praise the Lord. So we have a 40, our own time of trial and testing. Amen? Amen. It's hopefully not 40 years. And it's certainly not 40 days because we're not Jesus. And we cannot pass every test. But there is a time of trial and testing for us that God is bringing us through. He gave us these stories so that we would understand and not think, Oh my goodness, I got baptized, I'm good to go, give me a hammock and a martini, and I'm going to hang out till I die and go to heaven. No, we are here going through trials and tribulations, pain and suffering, because God is putting us to the test, and He's teaching us. We are students in the school of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. A time of trial and testing. Praise the Lord. Look, we see right here in Luke chapter 22, verse 31, the Lord said to Simon, said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. In other words, who's doing the trial and testing here? God puts us out here and he allows warfare. The enemy comes to mess with us because he's accusing us that we have no right to be in the kingdom of heaven because we cannot keep the commandments. Do you see? This is what the whole purpose of this is. We saw with Job and others that God allows Satan to do certain things, but he cannot take our life because we are his and no one can snatch us out of his hand. But God doesn't tempt us, but the enemy does. Amen? And he, so he'll allow certain things so that we can see our own wretchedness. So we can see how desperately we need him in all parts of our life and not just one. Amen? Amen. And that the only way we're going to be able to walk as he walked is if we surrender and let him do it. Amen? Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. He's teaching us to trust him. Now, Satan does not want us to pass our test. There's no question about that. He wants to not only accuse us, he wants to make sure we never hear words like we're hearing today. He does not want us to pass. Why does he not want us to pass? We know He knows he can't take us from God, but he wants to make us ineffective, right? Because Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus said, I also say to you that, uh, to you, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Amen? Amen? We might have a little victory here. We might, you know, we, we, we can pray and we can see people healed and, and uh, lots of other things that happen. But are we really knocking down the gates of hell? What's really ruling this word, world today, even though God has a hand on it? The truth is the works of darkness is ruling this world today. But the devil never wants us to understand that we, if we pass all these tests, then we will be graduates, spiritual fathers and mothers, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And this world will be changed because God will have prepared spiritual fathers and mothers to break down the gates of hell and transform this earth into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. So the enemy does not want us to believe this. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. So he has strategies that he does to cause us to stumble and not pass our tests. Amen? Amen? And this is something that God showed me earlier this week, and I'm just so blessed. He wants us, the enemy wants to follow us to follow him and not Jesus. He wants us to follow him. Now, we're called to be like Christ in his image. In other words, Christ came in the image of the Father and revealed God to the world. And we are called to be like Christ in his image to the world so that they would see him. Amen? Amen? And so we are called to be like him. And the best example I can think of is the sun. The sun is the greater light. In the Genesis chapter 1, he says, I, I created two lights, the greater one to, to, to lead the day and one the, the lesser one to lead, rule the night. And of course, the ruler of the night is the moon, has no light of its own. It only reflects the light of God, but has no light of its own. But the sun 
is constantly giving of itself. It's not asking for anything in return. We don't need to refuel it. We don't need to do anything, and yet it's constantly giving of itself. It brings life on earth. It brings joy. It brings color. It brings all the good things we need. Even in the darkest times in our life, we look and we look for the light. And when the light comes, the darkness flees. When we're cold, the light comes and brings us warmth. The sun is a perfect example of God because he doesn't need anything from us, but he provides for us whether we do anything or not. Amen? Amen. We're called to be in that image. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mark 12, verses 29 through 31. Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is... Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it is this, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other grand commandment greater than these. Amen? Amen? This is how he wants us to walk because this is who he is. Jesus loved the Father and he loved the people. Amen? And we are called to love God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and love the people around us. This is what we're called to do. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. You see how I use the Son, because I see it that we're here not for our own lives anymore. We're here to be a blessing to be other for other people. Amen? Amen. We're already redeemed. We got everything we ever needed and more. But what we're here for is to represent him, to walk in his image so that the world would see him. But the enemy wants us to be like him. He's the total opposite of the sun. I got this when I was talking to my grandson. It just came to me. The sun and a black hole. The black hole is constantly focused on absorbing What's in it for me? I want more. It's never satisfied. Everything is swallowed up. Who wants to be near a black hole? Nobody. Because it's just somebody who's always thinking about themselves. Always selfish. Unlike the sun, which is constantly giving and never asking. Amen? Amen. It's a never-ending cycle of selfishness that never fulfills. But this is what Satan wants for us. He wants us to focus on ourselves. He wants us to focus on what makes us feel good, what's going to benefit us, because that's who he is. Amen? Amen? The first original sin in the Bible, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, the serpent, that Satan, was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the servant, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Where is the focus gone? From God? The self. Amen? Amen. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband with her and he ate. Amen? Amen. If you think about almost every sin you can come up with, it's the fact is that what he wants us to do is look in for our own interests. But what's going to please us, what's going to benefit us, and that is how we turn away from God and who he is. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now every time I, I see something, whether it's uh, uh, just wanting to kill time, just go to social media, I'm, I'm looking to fulfill some kind of void or whatever, uh, I've been asking myself, what is it, who is this for? Is this for me or is it for someone else? Is it for God? Is it for the people around me? And I actually have this ability to, uh, of course, um, well, you'll see as we go in the Word, it's not, it's not going to be my righteousness or anybody else's, but when I saw this, I realized I can actually start thinking about my actions and focus on what are these actions doing? Are they promoting the kingdom? Are they a benefit to someone? Or are they a, something for me? And if it's for me, it's not of God because that's not who he is. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and is enticed. You see, that's what Satan wants us to do, is focus on what our desires are. 
Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we okay? Amen. We don't, want to, we don't want to fall to this. We want to walk in God's image. And so how do we pass these tests? How do we do that? I just talked about this part right here. Our point of view, when I say focused on God and others, it's not about focusing on others and what they what they, how we are perceived or anything like that. It's focused on loving God and loving others, putting them before ourselves, putting God before ourselves and not focusing on ourselves. Amen? Amen. This is how we walk in victory. Amen? Romans chapter 14, verses 7 through 8 says, For none of us lives to himself and no one dies to himself. I never saw these scriptures like this before. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord. Amen? Amen. We're not here for our life anymore. John 12, verses 24 through 26. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone, unprofitable, unfruitful. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Amen? A dead person has no way to... A, to, to benefit themselves. They're dead. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. He who loves his life will lo lose it, focused on self. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. In other words, it's time to focus on God and the people around us. Amen? Amen. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, my father, him my father will honor. It's what we're here for. Praise the Lord. Are we okay? Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves. I don't know why I never saw this before. But for him who died for them and rose again, our purpose is to live for him and the people around us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. John 15, verse 13, Jesus said, Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Amen? We lay it down for Christ because he is our friend. We lay it down for the people around us who are lost and not saved because we want to see them saved. So we, we give up worrying about what we need and we get, stay focused on what's benefiting God and the people around us. Amen? Psalm 116, verses, verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. This isn't just because God likes martyrs who uh, want to just go blow up themselves or die and all that. No, it's about dying to self. That's what's precious in the sight of God because now he's got chess pieces that he can use. They won't move on their own anymore. He now has someone. He can be his hands and feet and he can touch the world and bless the world through those who have surrendered to him. Amen? Amen. Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 and 11, Then I heard a loud voice sing in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies, and they did not love their lives to the death. Amen? Again, the obvious thought is, oh, they get they got martyred, they died, and whatever, we got buried in the grave, went to heaven. No, it's about surrendering every single part of our life to live for him as he lived for the Father. I did not come to do my will, but the will of my Father. The words I do not that I speak are not my own, but the words I hear from my Father, those words I speak, that is what he's called us to do. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. But even all that, I can say, oh, well, I'm going to focus and what I'm doing is this doing for me or for God. I'm still going to fail because I'm still human. Amen? The ultimate thing is that we must believe that this is God's desire for us and that he will cause it to happen. Amen? If we believe, he will do it. Amen? All right. He gave us another example in the Old Testament with Joshua and Caleb. In Numbers 14, of course, we know the story, right? He sent out the spies to, to, uh, 
I think 12, right? Tell 12 spies, one from every tribe, go look at the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. That's what he has in store for his spiritual fathers and mothers. No more warfare in the mind, but total rest in God, oneness with him like a husband and a wife, and just being there in his presence all the time and being a blessing to the world. That's the promised land for us. And so he sent out the spies, but guess what? Most of them said, no, it's not possible. The giants are too big. It's, we say today, it's not possible. I got too many issues in my life. I don't have enough time left on this earth that God can actually redeem me from all of my sinfulness. I don't believe it. I don't have enough people telling me that it's true. But I got the word of God that says it's true. And God's promises, it says, I will bring you into that promised land. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephune, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes because they were tired of hearing of people saying that, oh, I'm going to be constantly a work in progress until I go to the grave. No, no, no. God says, no, I have a way for you here. You don't have to die in this wilderness. Amen? Amen. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, the land we passed through, the, through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. The land that God has promised for those who love him is exceedingly good, way better than anyone's ever experienced in this walk. Amen? If the Lord delights in us, and He does, then He will He will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, or the issues that you have in your flesh. For they are our bread, they are, their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. With us, do not fear them. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. I know this is not popular traditional teaching, but this is the word of God, brothers and sisters. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 16 through 19, For who, having heard, rebelled. Indeed, was it not all those who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Moses was showing them the way and teaching them. Now with whom was he angry 40 years during that trial of time and time of trial and testing? Was it with, not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear they would not enter his rest, but those who did not obey? So we see they could not enter in because of unbelief. Amen? Yeah. I know that if I walk out there in this world and I walk to churches full of people and I talk this message here, only, the God, only if their hearts are open to the truth, there will be plenty of people who would say, no, that's just not possible. That's not possible that we can walk without sin on this earth. But God's word is showing us clearly that we can. Amen? Amen. Yeah. We're not talking perfection. That's another word. That's another teaching for another time. We're talking about holiness set apart for God to be used by him. Like the Paul and John and James and Matthew and all of those who finished the way the race graduated and got their crown. Amen. Hebrews 4, verses 14 and 15, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but when in all ways, all points, tempted as we are, yet without sin. You see, he is the one who's able to get through all this. And if we are in him and he is in us, then if we let go, he will cause us to do the same, not on our own strength, but in his. Amen? He knows what we're going through. We, there's no giant in our life that's too big for him. He can do it all. Amen? 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. We, uh, we find ourselves sometimes in situations where either we want to get angry, we want to lust, we want to do something. And if we're focused on God and say, God, look, I'm, I'm stuck in this situation like Joseph was with Potiphar's wife. Lord, I can't do this on my own strength, but I turn to you. He will open a door. He'll show a way. He'll show us how not to follow the flesh and follow following uh, Satan in his way because that's what he wants. He'll do it. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, being confident of this very thing, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ again. The second 
coming, our own personal revelation of him, our graduation is when we see Jesus Christ face to face. Amen? Amen. So he's going to do that work. He will prepare us. He only asks us to believe. Amen? Praise the Lord. First John chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. By this we know that we love the children of God when we lo love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome because it's not our work to do. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Our faith in Him is how we overcome all of that. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. That's how we do it. Praise the Lord. I hope we're getting this today. I hope God, pray to God that God's opening our eyes to this, that we, we have total assurance that God is able to help us graduate. Amen? Amen. Let's uh, lighten it up a little bit and talk about this crown. This crown that we get at graduation day. James uh, we're going to look at our opening verse again. Just remind ourselves, blessed is the man who endures temptation. In other words, passed every test. For in all ways he was tempted. All ways we will be tempted. But with resting in him, he will bring us there. For when he has been approved, he or she will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. This is the blessing. Amen. Exodus chapter 34, verse 29 through 35, gave us a clue because we talked about Moses. He graduated. He was now ready for that good work of leading the other people. God is preparing us to be ready for that good work to bring out the other people. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain, face to face with God, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shown while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin on his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Can you imagine that? Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them his commandments, all that the Lord had spoken with him on the Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with him, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he, he would take the veil off until he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. God. Amen? Amen. So his face was so bright that they couldn't bear looking at him. Amen? That's what it's saying here. That's a, an Old Testament version of what's coming for us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's talk about the apostles. I, 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 I was Googling like the oldest known paintings of the apostles. And every time I found one from the old days, the first century, third century, or whatever, you'll notice that every one of the apostles had this, they didn't have a little gold ring on top of their head. They had this biodome, no, this, this like diver's helmet, this round bubble around them. And how else could they, how could they actually paint what they saw? What they saw was this glow in them that was, it made them stand out. They were holy and separate completely. They had already been in their journey. They had already gone through all the struggles and trials. They waited in that upper room until the day of Pentecost. And now they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they walked in light. Amen? Amen. And so over and over we see this in the paintings. Every one of the apostles had all these things. This is a more modern one, but I just wanted to show them all. But the question is, are they literally visible? Are we going to be like uh, that, that cartoon, uh, uh, this little light of mine? There's a cartoon on YouTube you can find. Light it's a light bulb, right? And walking down the street. No, I don't believe so. I don't believe it's going to be literally visible. I'm going to give you some modern day examples of what I believe this crown of life looks like. Amen? Amen. All right. Just um, not even 100 years ago, there was a man named Smith Wigglesworth. This guy was no... Nobel laureate. He was not a learned person in all the uh, doctrine and the theology. He was a retired plumber. 
and but he was dedicated he followed god and after he was he was in his 60s or something he'd been following the lord for something like 40 years and then all of a sudden out of nowhere this man gets an anointing that's so powerful that he got 23 registered in the newspaper resurrections he had he can pray for people they would heal the sick he would teach the word whatever he was doing wherever he went everything would change because of him he was a simple guy just like the apostles of those days the foolish things of this world but let me show you a quote that's very common you can find it everywhere about what happened just about 80 years ago this is from the marionstar.com it says one day wigglesworth was on a train in london two men boarded the train and sat near the evangelist he didn't say a word to the men but the presence of God was so real on the train that the men fell to their knees. Sir, they, they said to the elderly minister, you convict us of our sins. What must be, we do to be saved? Amen? Amen? That is the crown of life, to walk in the holiness of God and let people experience the God and be saved. That's what this is about. Amen? Amen? We don't have that now. God can use us right now because we're in school and it's a hands-on school. But the truth is, we want to see this happen in the world. Amen? Amen? We want people to experience God in such a way that they can't stand it and they have to be saved. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. My own experience, young in the faith, God sends me for the first time. He sends me to a place called Prayer and Fasting Mountain over here near where we live and as as i'm over there and spending time with god the woman who runs that place is outside praying for a man and when i walked by and i got close i was probably 20 or 30 feet away and she was praying for him when i passed by i could not stay i had to turn away because the presence of god was so strong and i was so sinful i could not even get close that was a real from me testimony that it is possible to have that kind of anointing on this earth amen? amen praise the lord praise the lord ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 through 24 says this i say therefore and testify in the lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the gentiles walk not like the world in the futility of their mind having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to god in true righteousness and holiness amen and that's by surrendering to him and letting him do that putting him on focusing on him asking him to do this in us that he will not turn us down if we believe he will do it amen, amen. praise the lord praise the lord all right Let's wrap it up. Our opening verse, I just want to run it by again, because this, this verse is what I believe God wants us to focus on. Blessed is the man or woman who endures temptation for when he or she has been approved. It doesn't say, just get through it until you die and then you'll be with me. When you have been approved, he or she will receive that crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen? Amen. It is not our purpose to be fulfilling our own desires or to even be well-liked in this world or anything else. We are to follow him and serve him and serve those people around us that God leads us in his Holy Spirit to do, not of our own works, and to live for that. And God will help us when we start doing something that's to fulfill our own desires. We can ask him to convict us. We can call, turn to him and he will deliver us out of those things because this is his desire for us. He wants graduates. Amen? 
Praise the Lord, but it must be a death to self. Praise the Lord. In a life for Christ. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood, spiritual childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. It's not about our own ability, but faith in Him. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God and woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work, like Moses was, like Jesus after he went, his 40 days was tested and passed the test. When Moses passed the test, now it was time for their true great commission. Moses was now ready to lead the people out of Egypt. Jesus was now ready to lead people into salvation, but he was not going to do it until he was baptized and finished the trials and testing that we're all going through today. Amen? Amen. So we will be equipped, a graduate, with our crown, with our diploma, the Word of God, saying, now, now you're ready. Now you're ready. I'm going to use you to change this world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Not out there somewhere else, but in the presence of God while on this earth. And he shall go out no more. Not in the flesh, in communing with God in the flesh. No, in constant fellowship with God the way Jesus was with the Father. Walking in his image when they say, like Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. They will say, we will be able to say, if you've seen me, you've seen Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And not go out anymore. The words we speak will not be our own, but the words that he tells us to speak will be the words that come out of our mouth. We will not hurt people anymore with our own flesh. Amen? Amen. I will write on him or her the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for your word, Lord. This is not my speaking here. I would have never come up with this. This is your word telling us your truth, Lord. It's over and over, pattern after pattern. You show us your ways, Lord. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you that we don't have to sell you short and think that we have to stay in the wilderness until we leave this earth. Who will go out then? Who will be ready? Who will be the next Smith Wigglesworth? Who will be that woman in the prayer mountain? Who will be the next, who knows, Billy Graham? Whatever it is, Lord, here we are. And we give ourselves to you. Do what you got to do in, in each and every one of us for us to graduate, Lord. Because without you, we cannot graduate. Give us the faith. Convict us of everything we're doing to satisfy ourselves. And do this work for your glory, for your namesake. We'll be blessed beyond measure, and we thank you for the crown you'll give us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. For everyone here, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen.